Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm checking out this brushed hexacopter. This is a collaboration effort between two friends over at the Alien Flight Facebook group as well as the Brushed Micro group. They are a community of people who are micro quad fanatics. I would encourage anyone who is into brushed micro quads to join these groups. Everyone is so helpful. The hex frame has been sent in by Phil and the Alien Flight controller board has been sent in by Jacob. Thanks so much to those guys for showing what is possible with these components. The Alien Flight controller board is an evolution of the old Alien Wii Flight controller. The Alien Wii board was discontinued some time ago, however the developer continued to make plans for an F3 version which could run clean flight, and that is what we are looking at today. This is the Hex version. I've never built a Hex before that is capable of full acro, so I am pretty excited to see how that will work. The Alien flight boards work via a satellite receiver connected to it. I'm using a DSMX Lemon RX here, which offers more frequency hops than the DSM2 protocol. I have attached the little Hyperion camera to the top, which means this will also be my first FPV hex as well. I have connected the camera's power leads to the pins underneath the flight controller, which also powers up the flight controller, and it powers the camera fine as well. The motors are the CL0820 8.5mm brushed motors from multiflight.co.uk. These offer more power than the stock hubs and motors, however I'm not sure if I will benefit from this on a hex, so time will tell. They come with these JST connectors that plug directly into the Alien flight board without any modification. It is really easy to build. Let's talk about the frame. This is cut using water, believe it or not. I didn't even know that was a thing. But Phil makes these frames in two parts. Both are extremely lightweight and they use the motors as part of the frame structure. On their own, the plates feel quite flimsy, but it really works to get a really lightweight setup, and I've not had a frame break on me yet. At this point, I should state that for the moment, you cannot buy these products. You can, however, download the plans for the flight controller off the Alien Flight website, and then approach a circuit board manufacturer to make them up for you, which is exactly what a lot of the guys are doing on the Facebook groups. Some nutters are also building them from scratch and adding the components themselves, which is not something that I fancy doing at all. But if you do fancy building one, then definitely join the Facebook groups and there will be someone there to help you out with it. There is also a similar frame to this hex that is made over at picnicquads.com if you are interested in that too. The firmware that I'm running on the board is Betterflight. You have to use the Hexacopter specific firmware that is listed on the Alien Flight website, otherwise the board won't connect to Clean Flight properly. I prefer to use Betterflight over Clean Flight as I find that the PIDs work nicer as well as the rate settings. I'm using the Lux Float PID setting for now as I get oscillations in this version of the rewrite PID. Apart from that, as it is running clean flight, the settings are pretty much identical to my recent cheap micro build, so I will link that below if you are interested in the settings. For the battery, I'm using a 750mAh Nanotech battery and a Valcro strap from picnicquads.com. I'm using my Tyrannis with an Orange RX module for controls, and my Fatshark Dominator V2 goggles to record the DVR. Let's go and do some flying. So, here's the thing. It's not going to take you a long time to realize from watching this video that this thing is absolutely superb. I mean, just look at that view. Those two motors there. I don't think we take advantage of this enough when it comes to quadcopters, and I'm guilty of this. You know, I spend most of the time trying not to get the props in shot, forgetting that if we put the camera in the right place, we can really make it feel like we are on top of the quadcopter, and that is what happens here. It's absolutely stunning. 
So why is it a problem that this thing flies so good? Well, I mentioned earlier that you can't buy this flight controller, but there's a big yet on that because, and I can't promise anything, but there is a potential that microfpv.eu are going to be doing a small run of this flight controller. And I imagine if it is popular, which I think it's going to be, because just look at this. It flies so good. I'll get onto that in a bit, but I was absolutely blown away by this for a couple of reasons. The first one is the extra amount of power that is produced by those motors. So I initially thought that extra motors would mean extra drag, extra propellers mean extra drag, but that's just not the case at all. I mean, it's got so much more power than my smallest quadcopter, even with the dark edition motors on, it just flies brilliant. And it's really aerobatic as well, as you'll be seeing from this video. So yeah, at the moment, I am actually preferring this to my quadcopter. Maybe prefer is a strong word. I mean, I love both of them, but I love what this brings to the table. Just look at this fast sweeping under the trees, spin around, and then just power up and just flying around the trees there. Now, you will notice a slight wobble, and that is because you cannot use the stock PID settings that Better Flight offers. So I'm in Lux Float here. But if you use the stock PID settings, you are going to get a lot of oscillations because the stock PID settings are designed for a quadcopter and not a hexacopter. So what I had to do was bump the P gain up. I think I set it to about 9 to get this stability as I do a four point roll there. You know, you need pretty good PID settings to be able to do that. Anyway, I'm digressing. So yes, the P gain I set to 9 and the I gain I bumped up to, I think it was 0.44 and then the D gain was about 60. Now it's still not perfect. It's very close to being perfect. I'm getting a couple of wobbles when it levels out from a roll or a flip, but I could put that down to the wind. I mean, you wouldn't know it again, but there is about a 10 to 12 mile an hour wind on this video, which is mind blowing because it looks really smooth as I do a bit of proximity flying here. This thing is just so good. And you know, having those motors in shot, those arms really allow you to know where the edge of the quadcopter is and you can thread the needle. It is really enjoyable. To fly. So I'm getting about a five minute flight here. I say that I just land at five minutes because there's no on screen display. I'm sure it can fly longer than that. I just set my timer for five minutes just to be safe. So there is a long flight time as well with these rolling spider props and the 750 milliamp battery. Now, here is a little bit of extra bonus footage that I shot because I started to get a little bit cocky with it and I crashed it but there was no damage whatsoever. I thought I want to play around with the acro a little bit more and get closer to the trees and things and this flyer ends up in a crash. But yeah, anyway, I didn't mention that when I was showing you the quadcopter earlier but this is using the rolling spider props which just work amazingly. Yeah, and that nanotech battery as well, giving me great flight times. This quadcopter lifts it no problem. Another four-point roll there, and it handles it absolutely no problem at all. You know, sometimes it is smooth, and sometimes I get a little bit of a wobble, and I think that is down to the wind. Perhaps I need to mess around with that I and the D gain a bit more. But you can see here, I start to play with the tree a little bit here. I start to go for some rolls and some dives down the tree, and that works. But unfortunately, uh, I do end up crashing. Yeah, I want to play around more with doing stuff like this, diving down the tree and almost hitting the ground this time, but not quite. Yeah, I just really love how this thing flies and I really hope that more people get a chance to build one. If microfpv.eu release this, I will definitely do a build video of a hex, one that you can buy because as I say, you can't buy this frame at the moment. 
yeah, again, special thanks to Phil and also Jacob for this collaboration. I am so impressed with how this flies. And I'm really impressed with that little camera too. I mean, just look at the video footage. There's hardly any breakup at all as I go flying across this field here. And that's another thing that I love about my curves. There's hardly any breakup on the camera because there's not much material for the video to penetrate. So we always get a great video feed. So as this video comes to a close, I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm going to take a dive down this tree and it's not going to go very well. You can follow me on Instagram at andyrc underscore channel. Please continue to subscribe for more videos like this. Cheers.